So this is another uh, Elance project um, that I took on um, for a, uh, a physics professor, actually, and it demonstrates the concepts associated with the Fourier transform, um, which, if you're not familiar with, basically states that any kind of complex uh, periodic waveform can be composed of simpler waveforms, of uh, groups of simple waveforms. And you can actually, um, these are the various terms uh, along the bottom here. Um, that represent those waveforms, the simple waveforms. And if you scroll over them, you can actually see what each individual one is. Um, and then if you, if um, each one has a magnitude and phase, and if you, you can come through and modify these things, and you can actually visually see in real time how a change to one of the terms changes the overall shape of the composite waveform. So it's kind of a, a really like intuitive, instructive, interesting tool. Um, let's see, there's a handful of oscillators that you can use. So, you know, you can do like a standard sine wave, you could do a triangle waveform, a sawtooth waveform. Um, uh, let's see, uh, another interesting aspect to it, let's go back to the square waveform. Um, Another interesting aspect of it is is that you have all of these terms, and each of them, you know, you'll notice that each of them gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's um, the the way that it affects the final waveform is more and more granular, is smaller and smaller. Um, so if you start, there's an option here to remove terms. You can add terms, um, and you'll see, you'll actually see that I've had these DOM objects dynamically change shape so they fit onto the screen properly. Um, but uh, as you lower the number of terms, what will happen is the ability for the Fourier transform to generate a composite signal will gradually degrade because it has less and less granular terms to work with. So um, if we turn it right down, what you'll see is the uh, right you right you actually just end up with a sine wave because you've only got one term which is one sine wave but well let's turn it back up to a couple terms to get an idea um, so there's actually two representations of the signal here one is the mathematic representation in white um, let's turn this back down to one and you can actually see that mathematic representation um, you can see it better maybe with like a triangle um, because that that doesn't line up with those lines the same way um, and so then as we turn up the number of terms, it works a lot better with, with square. As we turn up the number of terms, you can see how the Fourier transform is, more and, is better and better able to approximate this complex signal um, because it has, it has more granular um, signals to work with, to compose. So what's going on here is, you know, we're actually, I'm, I'm actually calculating each of these terms um, you know, just using a simple uh, trigonometric function. Um, and then what I do is I add all of those signals together to create the composite signal. Um, so that's one interesting aspect of the application. But what, what was really challenging for me was that um, you're actually able to draw a custom signal um, into the program. And so there were some really interesting, tricky aspects to, to writing the Canvas portion of this that uh, reads in the user data, uh, converts it into like a signal that the Fourier transform is able to work with. And then, so, and then the Fourier transform um, is able to take that signal and output, and, output, uh, and output the approximation. And if we go ahead and turn up the terms, you can see how much more accurately it's able to approximate this um, this arbitrary signal, and if we turn it right up, I mean, it should be should be able to be basically identical to whatever you draw. So um, it's actually it's a really neat algorithm. Um, I used um, I used uh, uh, I think it's signal dot, uh, no it's DSP dot JS um, for the Fourier transform because uh, it just seemed absolutely foolish for me to try to write the algorithm from scratch. Um, and I'm sure somebody else out there could do a better job than I could. But um, yeah, so this was a pretty interesting project. Very challenging, a lot of math that I wasn't familiar with. And um, I was happy though to uh, dig in and do the research. Um, I mean, when I first started out, I had actually even never heard of the Fourier transform. And so I did the research necessary 
uh, to produce the product that the client wanted and um, was able to make it happen. He's 100% happy with it. Um, so um, I'm going to include the source code. Uh, unfortunately, um, I wrote this a while back and the source is a little bit of a mess. It really needs to be refactored and cleaned up. Um, and something that's something that I would like to do eventually. But um, as you can see, it's a functional program and it, um, it does actually work properly. So um, thanks for uh, taking the time to have a look and I hope you found this kind of interesting. I think it's, it's, I think it's kind of a neat tool. So um, thanks a lot for your time and um, I will definitely include this with the source code. Thank you very much.